College Corner THO 08150398. Okay, the um, how to create the image. Okay, thanks. Basic principles of lighting, light reflection, light concentration, control over the light percentage, light um, sensitive material. Okay. Um, these are all the interesting pictures you can do with photography. You've got um, light painting here, light painting there, and then you've got um, fast short speeds here, slow short speeds here, and then you've got fast short speeds and um, low light photography there. Next. Okay, um, how to control light. Um, simple aperture, short speed, and ISO. That's really the main keys that you just need to know. Next. Aperture. This is the aperture, so just think about it like um, the lens of your eye. It opens and closes as the sun um, brightens. So um, the brighter the image, the smaller the aperture hole, so it can grab in a nice amount of light. Um, the darker the image, let's say it's a dark environment, sorry, I should have said, um, the more light you need to bring in, so the lower, num the, lower the number. It's kind of backwards, you would have thought the lower number. But, um, okay, so yeah, um, depth of field. There you go, so you, um, when you've got a small aperture, I mean a small aperture, it's, um, if there's more detail in the picture, a wider aperture creates um, right, less detail and it focuses on the, the, like, the subject in front of it, basically. Okay, short speed, um, different type of short speeds, um, fast and slow. Uh, obviously slow short speeds uh, to, are to let in more light, faster short speeds are to capture action and um, what a fast short speed does it leave less and less, and less light as well. Okay, motion blur. Motion blur is caused by a slow short speed. And um, if you look here, this is a slow short speed. You can see the fans going around. As it gets faster and faster, it freezes the fan. Like the same with here, the water, is, there's fast water there. That's a fast short speed, just captured every single piece there. With here, um, that's slow short speed, and it's made the water look like smoke because it's captured you know, more movement. Um, okay, ISO types. Um, ISO types is the sensitive material um, that um, captures the light because um, our eyes see everything by light and everything has been seen, um, colours etc. are seen because the light is reflecting back into our eyes and brain, which uh, gives us an image. So, anyway, um, yeah, you've got your ISO here. So, like, like our brain, um, the light sensitive material. Um, and then you've got the. It, uh, one second, one second. Um, so basically, the film has been replaced and turned into a sensor because everything's going digital and that was analog days, everything's digital now, I don't know what they're going to bring next, it's alien spaceships or what. <laughs> okay, ISO, now with ISO, yeah, let's say you've got a low ISO, yeah, it, it, it will get in more, more detail in the image and it will make it sharper and your, let's say for example, you'll be able to see um, spots on someone's face because of the low ISO. High ISO will, um, Create noise in the image and uh, distort the picture. Let's say ISO 32. But the um, the good thing about a higher ISO, yes, it distorts the picture, but it makes you be able to see an image um, that is very dark. So it brightens up the picture. You have to really like go over it and learn it slowly. But I'm just trying to breathe through it quickly. It is a very simple, very simple. But okay, look, ISO 80, clean picture. ISO 800, etc. Okay. Um, overexposed image, so we've got a bright image here. <laughs> we've got a bright image here because there's too much light here. Dark image, obviously, because it's been underexposed, not enough light in there, we have to make a silhouette. But people use this as a style as well. And if you like to blast out your pictures, you can use that style. Okay, um, correct exposure. Ta da! The, um, the background's exposed, the, the freaking. Um, the sky's exposed nice and clearly, you can see the clouds, the man's exposed clearly, and um, this character here has been um, captured at the right short speed because it's obviously they did it quickly. Okay, air manual exposure versus auto. Automatic, this is what everyone uses at the moment. The computer's doing all the work, figuring out all the mathematics, and it's come up with um, the wrong you know, chemical mixture of um, light exposure. This is when you do it manually because you, you understand you've uh, um, exposed to the background and the people and you've put them figures in yourself and it takes practice to do that. But um, manual's better when you learn how to do it. But auto can help as well. You'd be surprised nowadays what um, auto can do. Okay, um, manual chart. Um, to, uh, okay, this is, this is uh, basically what you need to know. Um, it's, yeah, it's a lot to take in, but um, obviously we've got different apertures here. And then we've got depth of field here. That's what the apertures do. 
um, um, F32, basically F and aperture mean the same thing. F32, obviously more detail, you see the man at the background. This one, 1.4, you just see the man and the blurry background, it looks like it's been Photoshop, but it hasn't been Photoshop. Shot speed, obviously, um, slower it is, more blurry the man. The faster it is, the more sharp the man is. You can capture water. Um, ISO here, um, lower the ISO, the cleaner picture, more detail, high ISO, distorted picture. Okay, next, um, camera manual input phone, camera. okay. So there's a um, bit ways you can um, you know, give it a try and give it a practice if you want to have a little go at photography. You don't have to go buy a big expensive camera to be a photographer. You can just use your phone camera basically. So obviously this is a proper camera, this is a DSLR camera. Uh, it's got a lot of buttons and you have to learn that slowly. But um, what you can do if you want to uh, be able to uh, control exposure, light exposure, you can download apps and they've got features where you can control the light exposure and you can make your own exposure and make your own beautiful pictures and look, look like a model on the social media. Anyway, phone applications, there are some of the phone applications over here. So you've got uh, manual, blah, blah, and there's probably many more that um, software producers make. Okay, next. Um, feel free to ask me any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next. Uh, any questions? Okay. Are you a photographer then? Yes, I'm a professional photographer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Okay. So tell us a little bit about it. So what okay. sort of things do you put uh, like? Uh, I, what sort of things do I do? Do I photograph? Yeah. Also, uh, I photograph um, people. I photograph uh, animals, um, landscape, uh, macro photography, and I photograph uh, abstract. Yeah, that's it. Abstract. That's the right word for abstract photography. Mm -hmm. So basically anything. Oh, to be honest, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it took me a while to figure it out. When I, the first time I saw a camera, I thought, "What the hell, man? There's all these buttons all over the place." And I thought, "Forget it. Let me just have a little go." Anyway, I um, stopped fiddling about. I was like, "Why is that a mess? It looks terrible. It's all blurry and everything." I was like, "Yeah." And anyway, I um, looked up on a couple of videos on the internet and then looked and searched some stuff. Got a little idea. Still couldn't understand it. And then um, I just kept practicing and practicing slowly, and I started figuring out what the, how things do. And then I went to college. Um, I already understood like some of the basics, like ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, because I taught it myself. And then um, I went to college. They just super swapped me more in depth. I thought I knew it all before I went to college, but I went to college, and then they told me more in detail. So, and then um, basically what the teacher told me, told me and taught me is that you need to practice with your camera all the time to get better at it. You can't just know all the paperwork and think you're a pro. You've got to actually practice it, you yeah. know what I mean, with your camera. But it's a practical thing and you've got, it's a visual thing, so you've got to get used to looking at detail. Um, any more questions? Do you have different cameras for different things? Yes, that's right. Yeah. There are different cameras. Um, you've got sports cameras, which are really fast and they've got good um, ISO. So, because um, you have to um, take a picture at such a fast speed, you have to um, get an ISO that's, that can go high as well. Because what, what, what happens when you take a picture fast, yeah, it darkens everything, you know what I mean? Because it can't capture much light. So what you do, if you get a high ISO, which is more sensitive, so you put a tiny bit of light onto that sensitive paper, you get a nice clear picture. So with um, sports, they, they tend to get more expensive cameras, like you see really big ones on the news and stuff like that. It's because they've got good ISO. Just take the pictures with the long lenses. Mm. Any more? That's really good. Thank okay. you so much.